Hello, hello everybody, it's your Brock Chop, and we're back again with some more horror stuff. I suppose it's the month for it, I don't know, I just found out yesterday. Anyway, this is the Internet's Darkest Corners 5 by uh, Nick Crowley. Let's check it out. How plus 911 call. Hello, hello. 911. Stuck in a, it's a kid? Ah, sh it's 3.16 p.m. on school. April 10th, 2018. So a kid. A 911 operator receives a call from 16-year-old Kyle Plush, who Kyle had just experienced Plush. a freak accident. In the minutes prior to this call, name. Kyle had just arrived at the Seven Hill School in Cincinnati, Ohio for a tennis match. He had been driving a 2004 Honda Odyssey, okay. a minivan that... So since he's driving, he's at least 16, because I think he had to be 16 to, get, uh, to be able to drive in the U.S. ...featured three rows of seating, Minimum. with his gear for the day's match being stored in the very back. In order to retrieve it, Kyle climbed to the back of the vehicle and reached over the third row seating, extending his body as far as it could go in order to grab three rows. Damn, that's a yeah, that's equipment. a kid's vehicle. When suddenly, Not a kid, the seat's vehicle. folding mechanism was Having engaged, causing it to collapse into its storage position, taking oh. Kyle with it. Wait, that's unfortunate. In an instant, he was pinned and completely unable to move as he was now trapped in the car upside down, okay. not even being able. That to probably led to a lawsuit, didn't it? To move his the, arms and hands around to grab his cell phone. Though luckily, his phone had Siri, which he would call Siri. out to to call the police. Well, I mean, wrong video to be happy, I guess. Well, it didn't end well. Hello? Hello? Where are you? Oh, that's... Hello? Where are you? Oh, bro. I can't hear you. While on the phone, Kyle couldn't hear anything given how far away he was from the device, but he stated as clearly as he could that he was in dire need of help. Can't you make Siri turn the phone into a, what was it called, like, so all the sound comes through the phone, it's not like this, but you go like this. Was Due to the position he was stuck in, he was already struggling to breathe, Loud and he knew he was likely not going to survive much longer, which Jesus. he made very clear to the operator. Can't push down and up, so it goes back? Maybe he couldn't reach. Less than one minute later, the okay, call would come so out. The thing I know about these things is because, unfortunately, I was in like a, a thing. I'm not going to tell the story, but I know that they can track phones if you stay in the call with them. So it should be easy in to the find recording, out where Kyle he is. Kyle clearly portrayed to the operator where he was, that he couldn't hear her, and that his life was in danger. Why did it cut out? To immediately send Who a patrol car over to the school in search of him. It must have Though been inexplicably, Curtis. she never told the officers that Kyle believed he was going to die. Bro, what? Why not? That's important. So they're chilling. Yeah, they're chilling. Brother. Not understanding how dire the situation was, the officers that pulled up to the scene didn't even bother to stop the car. I mean, Instead, they simply drove throughout the listen, parking I know we'll, uh, we're currently in the age where everybody wants to hate on cops, but it's not the cops fault for this, okay? They're, it's not their fault. They didn't know this. They thought that could be a prank. She didn't tell them how serious the situation is. And she didn't tell them a location? What the fuck are they looking well, for then? Unsure of what car was Kyle's. What they they didn't even doing? bother to turn down their music or crack a window. Seemingly being more interested in the types of cars that other students were driving. I mean, they didn't know it was serious. It's not their fault, I don't think. As officers continued their half hearted search, another phone call would be made to 911. Okay. It was Kyle, whose tone was now oh, drastically different. God. That's probably. Don't have much time left. Jesus. Please tell me they took that seriously. After Kyle says his goodbyes, he tries one more time to relay what was happening, this time providing the parking lot he was in, along with the okay. exact make and model hey. of his car. GG, now they know the car and location. This should be easy. This Save the dude. Show. Kid. I'm dude. Old. I okay. Lot. Okay. Why didn't he say that? Probably was panicking, but she should have asked him for these things, right? Well, then he couldn't hear her. Ah, oh, this is such an annoying situation. It seems so preventable. Did he die? Probably died. I'm almost dead. Yeah, At this man. point, officers were still in the parking lot looking for him. Help was literally just a few feet away. And on top of this, the operator was also able to get a ping from Kyle's phone, which okay. gave coordinates to his exact location okay. within just 5 to 10 feet of his vehicle. Okay. And yet, so? the dispatcher never passed this information Why? Around. As Kyle remained Why? on the line fighting for his life, the officers on the scene would pull Wait, out Wait, she literally killed him. If he did, she killed him. Why didn't she say to the police? Hey, he's dying. He's at this location. I guess, parking kinda. Close their report. And carry on with their day, stating, what? I don't see nobody, which I didn't imagine I would. With this line making it apparent that those involved with the case never actually believed this situation was real. Well, I mean, they don't have a, like, the, the actual police, they didn't get the call. So, you can't, I know people are probably blaming them a lot, I assume, but they didn't get the call, they don't know how serious the situation is. If they, do, if they told them that he's dying in a car, I assume they're gonna be a bit more, oh, shit. Where's the car? Which parking lot? What's the car? Let's go check it out immediately. But she didn't. Why stand, not? 
viewed it all as a hoax. Oh god, bro, it's so creepy. Just minutes later, Kyle would go quiet, and the phone would disconnect for a final time. It that bitch killed him. Six hours for that trunk to be opened, and that bitch killed him. The 911 operator, she murdered the dude. This should be considered murder. She could have saved the dude's easy life easily. Just oh not by the police, God, I'm pissed. but I'm instead by Kyle's man, father, who had pissed. no idea that any of this had taken place, oh. seeking out his son's oh, vehicle, that's... only to find Kyle flipped upside down in the trunk. Oh my God. He had been dead for hours. Despite that's... the circumstances, Kyle did everything right. He remained calm, he was yeah. respectful, and he described exactly where he was and what his car looked that like. One pray, and yet, the police never really pray bothered up. to take his case seriously. Okay, I don't think it's the police fault. I'm, I'm saying this again. I think they should have been told. If they were told all the information, I think they would have searched for him a lot more. They might have even sent more cars. Instead, believing that this was all just a prank, and had the dispatcher simply relayed yeah, how serious the situation hurtful. was, and had these officers just gotten out of their car to more thoroughly, Kyle made... Plush most likely would have survived. Probably. God damn it. As a result of the mishandling of Kyle's case, his parents, Jill and Ron, were awarded a $6 million settlement with the city of Cincinnati. Ah, good job. Here's $6 million that we just let your 16-year-old die. I'm sure they're real happy about that. Though even more importantly for the couple, they vowed to do their part to assure that mishandled 911 calls of this nature never happen again, as they've gone on to consult with various good. emergency call centers this to tell Kyle's tragic. story, somehow taking this horrible accident and selflessly turning it into something positive for the rest of society. Today, these phone calls remain relics of a grave error made by law enforcement and a life that never should have been lost. Yeah, it should with have. these recordings now being forever immortalized in should the internet's have been easy to corners. Save that kid. God damn it. Hide and seek. Oh, brother. Okay, can we please not do that? That is extremely creepy. Please, brother. Okay, please. It's April okay. 4th, I know it's a creepy video, but you don't gotta add to it. I mean, you can get this kind of do. Please don't. <laughs> a man living in Baltimore, Maryland, goes live on his Facebook page, announcing that tonight would be another one of his famous game nights. At what? this time, the COVID lockdown was in place all across the United States, and practically like everyone was cooped up indoors, with little opportunity for real socialization. Andy? But for 24-year-old <laughs> Ernest Wilson and his friends, this didn't stop them from oh, having a good time. God. Ernest often hosted parties featuring childhood okay. games like Monopoly. Okay. Ooh, brother. Monopoly and Uno, adding in his adult That's flair cool. by turning them into drinking games, with oh, one game in particular God. being top of mind that night. Hide and seek. Hide and seek. Drunk. The evening began with Ernest inviting his okay. Facebook friends to the function, letting them know that this time the game night would be held at an Airbnb rather than in his oh, home. Oh, you're just inviting random motherfuckers from the internet, brother? Oh, oh, I don't know about it. Oh, but hey, Though he never gave out the address, out as this was a closed invitation creepers, event, even which he made very clear on his page. Please don't show up with nobody I didn't personally invite if we didn't discuss it first. Right. We're going to get left. You put the location in fucking public. How are you going to control who comes there? Outside. Ernest took this so seriously that at one point he even called out one of his viewers, stating outright that they were not allowed to show up under any circumstances. Oh, you're not invited. You're not pulling up on me. The person who just joined. If you're still watching, you're not invited. Because you don't fucking listen. I'm going to bang you in your mouth next time. However, it was never revealed who exactly this person was, or why Ernest expressed such hostility towards Guess them. Guess we're gonna find out, right? From there, Ernest would start and stop his live stream a few different times, mm. showing the progression of the party, which ended That's up with a, a decent people. turnout. Damn, there's even that there. Open that music? Oh. Nice! I mean, it's caught, it's surprising. shouldn't with be there tonight, being no but... signs of slowing down, it was time for the main event. The, the hide and seek? Hide and poke? About to play hide and seek. This was the caption for Ernest's final live stream of the night, which shows his group of friends preparing to play the game, turning off all the lights in the house before Ernest himself steps outside, assuming the role of the seeker, beginning oh, his countdown seeking. as the camera keeps rolling. Yeah. Bro, he's making this so creepy. One, two, three. Four. Wait, why are you moving? When I play with kind and seek you in Bulgaria, you go, you put your head to the wall so you don't see where people are hiding, you stay in one spot and then you count. What is he, what is he doing? He's moving, counting, that's cheating. Five, six. You're supposed to count seven, loudly. People hear your eight, ass. Nine, ten, a lamb. A lamb. Thirteen. I can hear y'all. Fourteen. <laughs> Fifteen. I can see y'all. Sixteen. You're not supposed 20, to look. 20, 20, 28, 29, 30, because I'm tired of fucking counting. Ready or not, here I come. After a long 30 seconds, it was time to find his friends, with Ernest starting his search inside the home. Ain't nobody in the bathroom. I didn't think about it. Fuck, oh, all right. 
gesetzt. Until he notices something. Let's turn it on your ass. I'm front door lock, dumbass. I'm on your ass. According to Ernest, someone was trying to get in through the front door, unaware oh. that he had just locked it. And assuming that this was one of the people he was looking for, he took off to the backyard, believing that's where he would find them. Oh. And sure God. enough, he did. He did, but one, did they also two, find him? Two, three. Who the f is that, G? I don't know. Get your okay. Get your dumb on the other side of this gate. <laughs> Who the fuck? Oh, Ernest flips the camera around, revealing a man hopping over a gate to the backyard. He had no idea who this person was, but he seemed to assume that they were likely just trying to get into the party, not really taking it too seriously, hence his joking Bro, attitude. That's a spiked gate. Ain't nobody climbing a spiked fence to just get into a hide and seek party. Though his Hell attitude nah. would soon shift drastically. Dumbass, nigga. This can't be one of my friends. Oh, oh, what was that? Hey, Pride! Come on, sit down! Is this hey. He got stabbed. In this moment, Ernest's live stream cuts off, and he would never go live again. Did he go on live from According to those live? at the party, this unknown man hopped the fence and brandished a gun, stating oh. that he was there to rob the place, being followed by one other person whom the group also failed. You're robbing a hide-and-seek place? to recognize. Ernest tried his best to run, you? but was eventually caught in the house, where after a few minutes, and for reasons unknown, the man seen hopping the fence fired his weapon, oh. striking Ernest twice, and ending his life. The killers quickly oh. fled the scene without harming anyone else, or seemingly without even taking anything. I think Kyle, right? The footage is highly disturbing, right? knowing that we're witnessing the final moments of a man who was just having some fun with his friends. But what makes this so much darker is that we have no idea who this person is, what? or why they did what they did. How? Even after four and a half years, Ernest Wilson's killers have yet to be identified. Brother! Detectives working on the case have theorized that this was likely a robbery gone wrong, potentially spurred on by Ernest's posting habits. As to put it bluntly, he was a drug dealer. As on oh. his Facebook page, he Oh. Oh. It's probably a druggie that knew him and, uh... He often showed off huge amounts of his product, okay. including during a live stream he did on the very day of this party. And also on the same day, Ernest had made a post about how much cash God he had damn it, on him, essentially putting a target on his back. Oh, are you dumb? I mean, you're a drug dealer. So yes, I guess, but come on, brother. Online, some have theorized that Why the spot robbery may have committed by the person that it's entered like Ernest's live stream earlier that night, which caused him to have that intense reaction. Jesus, You're Ernest. not invited. You're not pulling up on me because you don't fucking listen. I'm gonna bang you in your mouth next time. Though to my knowledge, this person has never actually been tracked down. I mean, but by far the most common sentiment online do the was that Ernest's friends shit. were involved to some well, capacity, we as exists, none of them so. were injured and none of their possessions were taken, making it oh. clear that at the very least, this crime was targeted at the host. And on top of this, remember, Ernest never shared the address for that Airbnb, at least not publicly. And yet, these I people mean, just so- Listen, he put pictures and stuff, it's quite easy to find nowadays, okay? This motherfuckers playing that jewel guesser game that can guess your fucking toilet's color from being your- mother stole nails or some shit. ...happened to show up to the home oh, you at know. the exact moment that Ernest was by himself in the dark. And perhaps most chillingly, as the robbery is unfolding, you can hear one of Ernest's friends chuckling in the background. This can't be one of my friends. <laughs> Though oh, as concerning shit. as this is, it's sadly far from conclusive. And to this day, it appears that Ernest's case is slowly being lost to time. Leaving I mean, what are you gonna do about it? If, you, if they, they couldn't figure it out in the first, like, months, they probably, I mean, Trail goes cold and all that shit. Was, some of his friends probably not that good friends. They might have known the dude. They might have invited the dude. As you for know. now, with only questions. We don't know. And shit one of the more disturbing live streams friends, so. I've ever seen. Damn, that's fucked. And now these messages. Before we dive into our next case, I want to first thank today's video sponsor, oh, Factor. God, I'll admit, I, like, I have a hell? very bad habit when it comes to ordering food. Him? I usually oh, don't give myself Nick? enough time to plan meals. Nice Nike of As evidenced Benan. by a previous case and several others discussed throughout Nike the series, Benan? live streams are often Nike a hotbed Benan? for disturbing moments online. And when researching Ernest's final stream, I came across yet another example of just oh, how dark things can get yeah. when the cameras go live. Uh, okay, how do you pronounce that? I have no idea. It happened Nike? on January 22nd, 2017, when a 14-year-old girl named Naika Venent went on Facebook Live with a oh, caption. God, kids streaming. I don't want to... In the stream, Naika discussed how difficult life had been. Throughout the years, she had been placed in and out of countless foster homes, where her oh. treatment ranged from poor to straight-up abusive, with this constant Damn, mistreatment brother. leading her to just want it to be over already. And based on the title of the stream, it was clear what her intentions were going to be. 
As the live stream progressed, hundreds of people flooded That's into the video fucked. to see what exactly was going on, as word quickly spread that something horrible was about to happen, though you wouldn't know it by looking at the chat. According to many watching, those in the comments had no sympathy for the girl, as many actually Damn. mocked her, calling her names, and even commented laughing emojis. Hey, what's wrong with y'all? Why y'all like this? I mean, I know y'all are not like this because y'all are my fans and you guys are cute and gorgeous and rich and the best people out there. She but... desperately tried to open Why up, with those same commenters that? viewing this not as a cry for help, but as a cry for attention, outright That's pushing fun. her to carry on with these intentions. I mean, and it's tragic. attention for help, though. Isn't it kind of the same, but like without all the bad inundations? Well, at least big words, I don't think it was. All while the camera remained rolling. However, even after she followed through it. with this, the behavior of her life gets better. didn't stop. Whether they assumed it was fake or it just didn't does. care either way, the hateful barrage of insults actually got even more vile once she had obviously passed away. And this went past just what? words, as people who knew her actually began making parody videos of the girl, replicating the position she was dead in, all God. while her live stream continued running. Damn. It would take over an hour. It's some of y'all people were evil as hell. An hour before police would finally be called What's and retrieve her body, people? with the stream being shut down by Facebook shortly before. Bro, it was I, an how was it not shut down before it started? Look at the title of that video. Awful situation Three. all around. It's a 14 year old kid. What I found saddening about this was her final reason for doing what she did. As she stated simply that she just wanted to be with her real mother, who she loved so dearly. And this was something that seemed to be the plan all along. Damn, as her mother, Gina bro. Alexis, claimed that she too desperately wanted to be reunited with her daughter. And following her daughter's highly publicized death, Gina actually came forward at a news conference to discuss the tragedy. Wait. She was in foster home, but she had a... I'm very confused. She had a mother? This is, her biological what? mother she broke down while her? speaking about her daughter's death. She dreamed of one day being reunited permanently. Why well, was she not able to be reunited with her? Fuck the care, people. It's a care for my baby. Where she blamed the entire foster care system for everything that had happened, believing that they didn't do a good enough job of keeping her. I mean, obviously, they fucking didn't. Her daughter safe, and they failed to try and reunite her with Naika. Why didn't they? Because of the obvious emotion involved and the overall shocking nature of this case, the news report would quickly go viral, leading to widespread support good. for the grieving mother. However, this also caused some people to look a bit deeper into what exactly led up to this live stream, for which one piece of information was brought to light that somehow made this case even more upsetting. Ow! On the day Didn't that Naika's life came upsetting. to an end, it was revealed that her mother was actually in the stream watching before and after it happened. Oh Seeing her my god, please don't tell me she was also... Oh my god, is that why she's in the force? Oh. ...daughter having this mental breakdown, please. as well as seeing all those people in the chat do that to her, us. which made people feel even more sorry for Gina, as her plight was okay, unimaginable. Okay, 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 I thought, I thought it was, uh, listen, I, I was prepared for anything, I thought it was, she was gonna be one of the trolls. Thank Though gosh, this was. wasn't the only revelation to come forward, as it was soon realized by the investigators looking into Naika's case, oh. that Gina had not only witnessed all of these people laughing at her daughter, and egging her into ending her life, but she had also joined them as well. You fucking bitch! I'm sorry, I probably shouldn't say it. I swear to God, some of these videos make me want to go outside and drop kick a moose. I don't have moose, there's no moose in Bulgaria, but they want to, they make me want to beat people up. And not in the good way, but obviously, like, what is wrong with you? I, I guess the foster care did a good thing that yoinked your daughter from your crazy ass bitch. Fuck. No. <sighs> Hashtag ADHD games play, you sad little DCF custody. That's why you are where you're at. For this dumb shit and more, you keep crying wolf. God damn, can somebody choke slam this bitch? One get else. Okay, I probably shouldn't be saying this thing. You dead, you will get buried, life goes on after that doesn't Fuck. listen to their parents, trying to be grown, seeking boys and girls' attention instead of her. Bro, you're not grown. These are not the thoughts of a grown ass adult. Her books. When you have a kid, you look after the kids. One of the last things Naika ever Don't said was that she desperately wanted to be reunited with her mother. That it same mother was not only watching, world. but actively Too pushing cool. her to follow through on her plans. So even this comment where she outright cool. says that it doesn't matter if you Shit. live or die, okay, I'm life sorry, goes I'll on. Stop. I'll stop. And it got even worse. The media also discovered that the reason Naika had been removed from her custody to begin with was because Gina had beaten her 30 plus times with a belt when she was- Yeah. Okay, uh, please. No, I shouldn't say that. No, okay. She was only six years it. old. Can't say that. On top of this, Gina often texted Naika saying that she wanted nothing to do with her, despite the young girl frequently reaching out and begging to be part of God, her life. God, that's so sad. Eventually, Gina would tell Naika's caseworker that the girl is y'all's problem. I'm done with the games. Jesus. Before sending Naika middle finger emojis when all she did was ask to see her brother. And this is all amongst other things that are far more horrendous that I really don't want to get into. With Dominico's, oh my god. Holy, bro, how is this woman free? Is there no prison? I mean, hell is too good of a place for this bitch. And yet, after Naika's death, Gina had the audacity to go on television bro, in an attempt to garner sympathy for a death her. that she clearly please. contributed to, saying that all she wanted was to be the girl's mother, despite god, rejecting her this. at every turn. And honestly, this Big is where I thought this heaven. entire story would come to an end. Until I noticed something strange when I was editing this video. Naika's Facebook page is still active. 
What? It's no longer posting anything original, but instead, the account is consistently reposting content from another page. A page run by Gina. After Naika's death, Gina seemingly seized control of the page. A page run. Lit talks. How is this woman still free after doing this much shit to a kid? Like, in free in society. You should not be in society. You should be under the society. Like, under the hell. By Gina. After it's Naika's death, Gina being. seemingly seized control of the young girl's Facebook account, where she now posts her own content, which includes her attempting to defend the fact that she gave up on Naika. Tell me what mother would accept a 13 going on 14 year old in and out of detention centers. Going Any mother, bitch, that's your fucking job. Since you decide to have a kid, you look after the kid, at least until she's 18. And then if she's that much of a problem, you deal with it. <laughs> In the jail or getting arrested while in foster care. <sighs> as well as her responding Why is she to those who blamed her for her huh? death. People be like, you heard rumors going around about you? And I did. <laughs> but I forgot to tell you one thing. That I don't give a fuck. <laughs> huh? What's my name? My first name is very much. My last name is Unbothered. <laughs> and even some posts where she's promoting her podcast. Disgusting. As it seems that after all this, Gina's actually trying to carve out some sort of career as an influencer. As she posts videos garnering being. sympathy for the loss of her daughter. Along with giving out parenting advice. Like, there's so much <laughs> to stuff whom? <laughs> that parents need to do for their child Jesus. that they're not motherfucking doing. They're not paying attention because they're taking the easy way out. With all this making it even more obvious if that she has little to no remorse for what she did. Jesus. What is the archeo when you need? What a disgusting human being. Oh, yo, that... Okay, that part pissed me off. Like, that... That just... I just... On the 11th of June, 2009, a young I'm man named Eugene triggered. Mata took to an urban exploration forum and wrote in broken English, Hello, I'd like to tell you about Odessa Catacombs. Odessa? Odessa is not far from the capital of Ukraine, Kiev. Under Odessa consists the biggest catacombs in the world. Their total length is more than 2,500 kilometers, God so damn. these catacombs are much bigger than the Paris catacombs. During World War II, a lot of citizens were hiding in the catacombs. Mm. A lot of them used oh. to live there for a year and more. Find some awful shit. So even today, it is possible to find weapons, equipment, God and damn. dead bodies. Every year, a lot of explorers get lost and even die there. Probably find a bomb. His post was accompanied by a series of photographs from the underground labyrinth, grenade. which stretched over 1,500 miles. God its paths winded aimlessly deep below the surface of the earth. The structure was mainly the result of limestone mining many years ago, though despite this, it was never properly mapped and was, conversely, not often explored, uh. essentially being a pitch black maze to nowhere. Given that the area wasn't well Bro, known, how brave do you gotta be to go exploring this shit? Or bored, brave and bored, and probably a little stupid, let's be honest. Back in 09, like, yeah, the post was met with amazement. Fellow urban explorers applauded the location and the photographs Eugene. that Mata had taken, wanting to see even more. And since he was a native of the area, Mata delivered. Thanks to all. If you want, I can add more photos. As I said earlier, a lot of people get lost and even die under Odessa. Maybe this photo will shock you. Maybe you should stop going there. God damn it. It's the dead body of a 19-year-old girl who had gotten lost in the maze. Though it's censored here, the image shows three young boys staring blankly at the camera as they stand behind a badly decomposed body. Understandably, this image caused a lot of intrigue on the forum yeah. as other users began to press for more you degenerates should probably call the police and get the fuck out of there. information. And sure enough, it was a story that Mata knew well. Three, two, one. Happy New Year, everybody! Happy 2005! Ooh. It was New Year's Eve, Happy. the final day of 2004, when a group of teenagers made their way down into the catacombs to begin their celebration. This wasn't super uncommon at the time, as many of the entrances to this labyrinth were very easily accessible. This one in particular just so happened to be located directly next to the public school, School 56, and it just then left 56. wide open, making it the perfect place for friends to sneak a few drinks. As the group began to grow more intoxicated, one of the girls wandered off in search of a place to relieve herself. However, she apparently took one too many turns and soon found herself completely alone. She cried out. Bro, there's weapons in trees, bushes, not in catacombs with dead people and guns and mines. But the tunnels were just too complicated. Each step she took led her more and more into obscurity. Her friends tried to find her, or maybe they didn't. We really don't know. But in their drunken state, they left the tunnels without their friend and never went back to find her. If she did no have a flashlight, it wouldn't have lasted long. And for days, she likely wandered deliriously through that pitch black maze. That's crazy. Until after what was likely at least three awful days, she passed away with her body being found approximately three miles away from the nearest exit. And looking God at one of the damn. only attempted maps of this tunnel system. Hey, she went far. She never stood a <laughs> okay. chance. Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, brother. <laughs> Perhaps it was dehydration or Holy hypothermia shit. that killed her. But according to some, based on the photo, the corpse appears to have its skull caved in, implying that in a desperate attempt to end her anguish, she may have bashed her head against the wall until she passed away. Her name was Masha. 
and she was only 19 years old. Okay, that's way worse. Oh my god. I mean, is it way Three worse? Three long months later, in April of 2005, Lata and his group were stumbled across the body, Honestly. immediately reporting their findings to the police. Good. Though law enforcement Good. refused to even try and venture down there in order to retrieve her, as they knew just how dangerous and unmapped this environment was. Okay, if everybody, Which, okay, if everybody knows how dangerous unmapped it is, why don't they just fucking map it? Huh? If people die there, just map the thing. two long years for her body to be recovered, thanks to a friend of Lata writing a strongly worded oh, letter to yes. the government that included a photo of Masha's body. Brother. The story is unimaginable. To be trapped in a place like this with no means of escaping, it has to be the absolute worst way to go. Yes, And because probably. of the gruesome nature well, nah, of the story and the photograph, worse, it spread all throughout the online world, fucked. where it became a legendary internet mystery. As even with the added context, many were still left with pressing questions. Were Masha's friends involved in some way with her death? Had they abandoned her there on purpose? And did Lata know more than he claimed? But as it turns out, there was one probably far not. more pressing question that oh, needed no. to be answered. Oh no. How much worse can In 2015, Shiba? a full decade after this photo was taken, a journalist named Mike Pearl had picked up the case with the hopes of writing a so Halloween Mike. article for Vice. And in his research, he made a rather unusual discovery, as according to him, Masha seemingly didn't exist. Pearl what? was never able to find any verifiable okay, I, proof. I got goosebumps on my back. Oh my god, I got goosebumps all across my back. What the girl named mean? Masha had ever gone missing in that area. He was also not able to find any death records of anyone by that name either, or even any reports of a body being pulled from the catacombs during this time frame. Something just wasn't adding Everything's up. Fake? It got stranger from here. Sometime after the photograph began making its rounds, one of the most prominent explorers of the Odessa catacombs put out a statement on his own website in regards to Masha, which read, Besides the original photographer, there isn't one person, civilian or law enforcement, that can confirm the story. We huh. believe it is just a practical joke and the corpse is fake. Oh. Following this revelation, Pearl was able to track down Lata, who was unable to recount where the body was probably seen, creepier, or kinda. even how to get in touch with the other people shown in this photo, none of whom had ever come forward to back his testimony, which makes the credibility of Lata and his story of Masha incredibly shaky at best. Mm. However, this is where the crux of the mystery stands today. When looking at these photos, one thing is apparent to me and essentially everyone else who has seen them. The corpse shown seems very real, and matches the decay of the bodies found in similar environments, with that one prominent Odessa explorer eventually deleting his statement at some point over the years, leaving the general consensus that this is in fact a real corpse. But if the story of Masha isn't true, what is going then on? who is this? Well, we have no idea. It's entirely a mystery. But the reality of the situation is that bodies being found down in these catacombs isn't totally uncommon. Over the years, many explorers have gotten lost down there and suffered the exact same fate as the story of Masha. Jesus. But on top of this, these tunnels have also been used by murderers as a dumping ground for what? the victim's body. After I had for three to six months. With either one of these scenarios being possible in this case, though the frustrating part is that we may never actually know who this person was or how they died, as I and many others have doubts that this body was ever actually recovered, just simply due to lack of public information and news reports about it. And instead, the reality is that this corpse is probably still down there somewhere and has simply been lost to time, as sections of the catacombs have been known to flood and cave in, sealing them off from the outside world And now forever. the bomb's probably the way so worse, now, right? and potentially the rest of time, the story of Masha will remain Sheesh. an internet mystery. Okay. Okay, definitely not creepy. Faces, okay, good to go. This is the it's good September way to end it. Faces, I like faces. The hunter through the wooded terrain of Christie Creek, Montana, on the trail of something big. He had been hunting oh, a large shit. black bear and managed Wait, to land a single second. shot, causing the animal to take off. I pulled my light, I'm sorry. Trail of blood. <laughs> he followed this trail all throughout the remote region before stumbling across a shallow ditch, where he would find a body. Why would you do Though that? Though not the body of the bear he I mean, just shot, and rather, the body of a woman reduced to bone. The what? remains were quickly sent off for forensic analysis, though very little could be determined other than the fact that she was a young woman and that she had been murdered, as they found two bullet holes in her skull. Oh, with her being essentially not the bear, the bear didn't shoot her. Really no Rotted. other information to go off of. A special team at the FBI started creating a composite of what this woman may have looked like. Oh god, this it looks was like the an result. Alien. Okay. This was their first attempt at depicting okay. Miss Jane Doe, so please who they take would that later dub Christy Crystal please. Creek, that though looks... it wouldn't be their last. Bro, that thing looked extremely creepy. Asked. Okay, even the uncanniness worse. of these depictions even is worse. undeniable. Yes. And recently, I've fallen down this rabbit hole of disturbing police sketches and can recreations. You please not? As though these can often be very helpful and do lead to legitimately good results, there are often times where they appear almost non-human. With many not. examples like Christie's being shared online on the FBI's website in order to enlist the public's help in identifying these victims. With Bro, one of the that woman, being shared this one here, she looks like she was doing uh, like cave paintings. 50 years, 50,000 years ago? Online on the FBI's That's all she website, looks like. In order to enlist the public's help in identifying these victims, with one of the more notorious examples coming decades later in 2014. 2014? The discovery was made on June 5th of that year, when a group of highway workers were mowing grass in the town of Geneva, Wisconsin, when Geneva. they noticed a pair of strange-smelling suitcases. Inside them were two oh. bodies. 
Oh, come on, brother, who does that? Women, both in various stages of decomposition, in and both suitcases? appeared to have been strangled to death. One would quickly be identified as 37-year-old Laura Simonson, while the other was in much worse shape, and distinguishing her facial features proved extremely difficult. Damn. But this didn't stop them from trying. Oh. Okay. No, this is no, one of the I'm more infamous examples out there due to just how unnatural it. it appears, with the face of this woman being turned into a meme and even being used in a video game. Why? What is wrong with people? Oh my god, I mean, if that was chasing me, but to me, there's up, one right? example that I've That's never been able to shape, as the entire story and its recreation gives me such an uneasy feeling. The discovery so was made all the way back in April of 1977, when a couple in Alberta, Canada had returned to their often abandoned cabin in order to empty okay. the septic. Who does this? Who goes to a cabin in the middle of the woods that's as no society? Aren't you people afraid? Have you not watched horror movies? Fuck that. Tank. Only to find a body floating inside. The body was in brutal shape and showed signs of extreme torture, as the man had been beaten, mutilated, burned with cigarettes, and even shot multiple times. What? And due to the condition of the body, it Why? was impossible to identify him. Though regardless, a recreation was made, and using a computer model of the man's skull, they slowly pieced him together. Okay, how, how do we go from the last thing to this thing? We later be dubbed Septic Tank Sam. Septic Tank There's something bro, so depressing about these composites, him that? these are real people with real stories and real names that have been reduced to these horrifying images and tacky nicknames. But there's another side of these police sketches too, as when dealing with victims, it's obviously incredibly sad. But when dealing with suspects, these off-putting identities can be outright horrifying. Huh? What do you mean? Over the years, there's been numerous unidentified killers who law enforcement were not able to positively identify, forcing them to turn to these same methods of sketching and recreating, with one of the darkest examples being that of the Lake Bodum killer. Lake Bodum? It was June 5th, 1960. Four Finnish teenagers were on a camping trip to Lake Bodum, sleeping peacefully in their tent on the lakeshore, when suddenly they were attacked. It happened in an instant as a man yielding a knife began stabbing through the tent, oh, eventually shit. bludgeoning the group with an unidentified blunt object. Wait, he... 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 You... 4 to 0 and he won? 4 to 1, I mean. That night, Damn. three of the teens would be killed, That's while crazy. one managed to survive with substantial injuries. When asked about what he had seen that night, the lone survivor claimed that the man who attacked them wore all black and had large red eyes. Why do you do that? Based on his accounts and other potential sightings, a sketch of what this man may have looked like was made, and the results were unusual at best. Okay. With this man going on to guard. Yeah, I believe he can shank four people. I believe it. Yup. I believe it. ...the appropriate nickname of Bug Eyes McLip, due to just how unnatural his facial McLip. features appear, especially his eyes. In fact, there's something unnatural about all of these recreations, yes, which begs is. the question, did any of them actually work? Did they? Well, surprisingly, out of these four people, three have been identified. What? Okay, please tell me the killer got caught, because if you... Why did he just do that shit? Crazy fuck, I hope you got caught and... Uranus destroyed in prison. Christy Crystal Creek would go on to be identified as Janet Lee Lucas, a 23-year-old who would be the last yeah. identified victim of serial yeah. killer Wayne Nance, with this Wayne identification being Nance. the result of improved forensic genealogy. The second and most notorious example would go on to be identified as Jenny Gomez, okay, well, who'd been strangled by Steve. Bro, how the fuck do you go from that to this? She cute. That is scary. Steven Zilich, a man dubbed the Jenny Wisconsin Gomez. suitcase murderer. And despite suitcase this recreation murderer. appearing to look nothing like Jenny, yeah. it was actually the sole reason that she was identified, oh. as one of her family members ended up recognizing these overpronounced cheekbones and matching them to Jenny. And then there was Septic Tank Sam, who was revealed oh, the killer didn't. to be Gordon Edwin Sanderson, thanks again to genetic genealogy, Damn. as a sample of his sister's DNA was eventually used to prove that this was in fact him, though it's still unknown who killed him or why. Which leaves just this final person, the killer so of at least three him. people. He, unfortunately, has never been identified. And this isn't too surprising, as the features of this person just seem impossible. He just looks far too- Nobody scratched him, nobody got DNA or something on there while he was- Bro! Too strange to be real, right? Well, even though he hasn't been positively ID'd, it doesn't mean that he hasn't been potentially photographed. Huh? Shortly after the teens were murdered, a funeral was held in their remembrance, for which a large crowd of locals were in attendance, with this photo of the crowd being snapped. And standing there, in the center of it all, was a man whose features looked impossible. This man would never be photographed again, and his connection to the case has never been officially confirmed, leaving these murders unsolved to this very day. It's a demon. That's a corn demon. Bro, I gotta go so many goosebumps. I don't know if my body's still good after this video. Smart schoolboy 9 internet rabbit hole. What the hell is that? Okay. Uh, good first step into a uh, creepy week. Month, I mean. I hope y'all enjoyed this. 
Let me know what y'all think about the video. If you have any comments, let them know. I read most of the comments. Actually, I read all the comments, okay? So I'll see y'all next time, okay?